In a moment, we will show a short video, an opening prayer recorded by Roddy Bell Shelton Biggs. A couple of comments about our time together today. It is said that poetry heals the wounds inflicted by reason. I have to read that again. Poetry heals the wounds inflicted by reason. I don't know why in their bio it is not listed that they are a poet. We are in for a treat today with Roddy's words. And when Laura and I were preparing this service, we also decided to bring in other poetry that supports the focus of her time with us today, which is to make the wounded whole, the other, the outlier, our beloveds, the spaces within ourselves that is separate from our undefended essence of who we are. And so we use poetry today, Roddy's poetry, other people's poetry, because poetry heals the wounds inflicted by reason. My dreams, they matter, though at times I may forget who I am or who I am becoming. My dreams, they matter when I make space for all that is. My dreams, they matter when I move away from that which no longer serves me. My dreams, they matter when I make space for the new possibilities in the circumstances. My dreams do matter. They matter. They hold so many truths and turning points. They matter, though at times I may convince myself that they don't. They do, for they call me back in time and forward still. My dreams matter. They matter as they pull me inward and simultaneously push me outside of myself as well. My dreams matter. They matter as they speak to the breath of love, of pain, of hope that rest in the fabric of my blood and bones. My dreams matter as they are connected to the dreams of my ancestors, connected to all who have graced this earth before, who grace it here and now, and will be connected to all who grace this earth when I when we grace it no more, my dreams, they matter. Your dreams, they matter. Our dreams, they matter. They matter. Our reading is a poem by the Palestinian poet Naomi Shihab Nye, Kindness. Before you know what kindness really is, you must lose things. Feel the future dissolve in a moment like salt in a weakened broth. What you held in your hand, what you counted and carefully saved, all this must go so you know how desolate the landscape can be between the regions of kindness. How you ride and ride, thinking the bus will never stop. The passengers eating maize and chicken will stare out the window forever. 
Before you learn the tender gravity of kindness, you must travel where the Indian in a white poncho lies dead by the side of the road. You must see how this could be you, how he too was someone who journeyed through the night with plans and the simple breath that kept him alive. Before you know kindness as the deepest thing inside, you must know sorrow as the other deepest thing. You must wake up with sorrow. You must speak to it till your voice catches the thread of all sorrows and you see the size of the cloth. Then it is only kindness that makes sense anymore. Only kindness that ties your shoes and sends you out into the day to gaze at bread. Only kindness that raises its head from the crowd of the world to say, it is I you have been looking for, and then goes with you everywhere, like a shadow or a friend. Our next reading is called Last Night As I Was Sleeping by Antonio Machado. Last night as I was sleeping, I dreamt marvelous error that a spring was breaking out in my heart. I said, Along which secret aqueduct, O oh, water, are you coming to me? Water of a new life that I have never drunk. Last night, as I was sleeping, I dreamt marvelous error that I had a beehive here inside my heart. And the golden bees were making white combs and sweet honey from my old failures. Last night, as I was sleeping, I dreamt marvelous error that a fiery sun was giving light inside my heart. It was fiery because I felt warmth as from a hearth and sun because it gave light and brought tears to my eyes. Last night as I slept, I dreamt marvelous error that it was God I had here inside my heart. The uh, sermon by Roddy Biggs will now be shown. We often hear a wounded narrative painting over the painful reality hidden in the shadows we dare not look. How are we to heal as a nation and make the wounded whole if we are always running from a dark and shameful past? What will it take to remove us from the shadows, to make the wounded whole. Granting us the gifts to connect, learn, be filled with rage, to weep and to weep. Oh my Lord, what? will it take to make the wounded whole? 
in the words of bell hooks how do we hold people accountable for wrongdoings and yet at the same time remain in touch with their humanity enough to believe in their capacity to be transformed can we make the wounded whole hold from now invisible bonds shackling many still in place hold from shots fired hold from torture torment and terror can we remain in touch with humanity enough to believe in a capacity to be transformed what will it take and are we ready are we willing as Unitarian Universalist, we have a moral and a theological responsibility to respond with love, grace, and in accountability to those wounded places. In doing so, our highest admiration of healing a hurting world is named and made known. May there be but a flicker of hope to come from those wounded places. May there be a low, soft whisper of love, salvation, freedom, growing louder and louder, awakening the choir of angels, black, queer, elders, children, trans, non-binary, forgotten, loved, unloved, unknown, descending from the heavens upon the earth, adding their voices to the holy chorus of liberation, reconciliation, and of love. Angels are descending from the heavens upon the earth. Angels now, once living, murdered, beat, sold, lynched, enslaved, make the wounded whole. Make the wounded whole. We've heard it time and time again. I've got my hands up. Don't. Oh Lord, make the wounded whole. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Make the wounded whole. Lord, who art in heaven, they say. Hallowed be thy name, they say. Thy kingdom come. Thy will is done on earth as it is in heaven. Make the wounded whole and heal a sin-sick soul. During a recent weekend spent in Auburn, Alabama, I, for the installation service of the Reverend Chris Rothbauer, the now settled senior minister of the Unitarian Universalist Fellowship of Auburn, Alabama, after a two-year pandemic delay, I had the humbling and powerful opportunity to take a trip down to Montgomery for a civil rights tour and to immerse myself in the rich, often painful history of what it means 
of what it meant to be black in America. I stood where Rosa Parks caught the bus. Lost in my thoughts, I walked the Freedom Trail and wept as I roamed the halls of the Legacy Museum and the National, National Memorial for Peace and Justice, also known as the Lynching Memorial. Oh, while thinking to myself, we often hear that wounded narrative, one that paints over a painful reality, hidden in shadows we dare not look. How are we to heal as a nation and make the wounded whole if we are always running from that dark and shameful past to justice, love mercy, tread humbly, says Micah 6 8. Do justice, love mercy, tread humbly, journey toward spiritual wholeness, working to build a diverse, multicultural, beloved community by actions that accountably dismantle racism and other oppressions in ourselves and our institutions. It is written in our proposed Eighth Unitarian Universalist principle. Do justice, love mercy, tread humbly. But what does it all mean? That's the question, isn't it? A week ago was Independence Day. And I wasn't feeling very patriotic at all. I'm still not. I mean, why would I? With all that is going on in the world, with all of the pain and heartache in this nation, with knowing my ancestral stories, Ones that connect back to enslavement, to lynching, to pain. Yet there's hope, isn't there? When speaking about Independence Day and what it meant to her, Jenica Davis Hockett, a youth ministry specialist, Working at our Unitarian Universalist Association had this to say, On Independence Day, I recommit to using my freedom in ways that liberate others. Said another way, make the wounded whole. Do justice. Love Mercy, tread humbly. And so how might we recommit to using our freedom in ways that liberate others? How might we make the wounded whole? That same old question is back, isn't it? How can we heal as a nation if we are always running from a dark and shameful past? We aren't and we won't. Plain and simple. 
For as long as we are running from a dark and shameful past, we aren't making the wounded whole. And we must stop running. We must be willing to hear the real, often painful narrative hidden in shadows we dare not look. We must bring them out of the shadows into the light as we journey ever forward towards spiritual wholeness. Working to build a diverse, multicultural, beloved community once and for all. And so, what is the narrative we wish to paint? Is it one of healing? One of grief, hope, love, resilience, or courage? Perhaps it's all of the above. And we each have a choice to make and a role to play in deciding what narrative gets named and how that painting, our painting of beloved community, unfolds. So that wounded narrative, that beloved community, that hidden reality in the shadows. How do we heal a nation, a people, and make the wounded whole? Beloveds, it is okay to stop running. It is okay to stop running, to start loving more, to begin healing as we make the wounded whole, as we choose what role we play, as we decide what narrative gets named. And as we create that painting of beloved community, we can hold people accountable and remain in touch with their humanity enough to believe in the very capacity to be transformed. This is my song, O oh God of all the nations, a song of peace for lands afar and mine. This is a home, the country where my heart is. Here are my hopes, my dreams, my holy shrine, but other hearts and lands are beating with hopes and dreams as true as mine. Beloveds, together we will be the ones to make it so. We will be the ones to make the wounded whole. But beloveds, it'll take all of us. It will take all of us. But I have faith. I have faith that we can do it. That we can make the wounded Hold a shame. Amen and blessed be. And before we show the video, 
a final poem by the poet Ted Lauder. Empower me to be a bold participant rather than a timid, <coughs> timid saint in waiting in the difficult ordinariness of now to exercise the authority of honesty rather than to defer to power or deceive to get it to influence someone for justice rather than impress anyone for gain and by grace to find treasures of joy of friendship of peace hidden in the fields of the daily you give me to plow and here is roddy with a poem as our closing prayer entitled we need a wrecking ball for the soul we need a wrecking ball for the soul which shadows all our expectations a wrecking ball for the soul which demands we surrender a sense of all control a wrecking ball for the soul which stirs within us all the greatest of frustrations we have faced many tribulations we have had many a deliberation we need a wrecking ball for the soul. We have missed many an invitation. What is our hesitation? Are we afraid of the altercation? We need a wrecking ball for the soul, calling us to create the greatest of transformations. The world is dying. Our people are crying, crying for liberation and salvation. We need a wrecking ball for the soul to shatter the walls built around hearts. A wrecking ball for the soul to shatter all the false accusations and conditions. A wrecking ball for the soul giving way to new beginnings, calling us forward towards incredible transformations. <laughs>